Welcome to Inside Japan. Over the past couple months, we've shared quite a few videos about the sights, the food, and everyday life in Japan. As Corey, Marco, and I are all lifelong gamers, we would like to share some of the unique experiences you might have as a gamer in Japan. Enjoy! Our focus today is Japan's biggest gaming event, Tokyo Game Show, aka TGS. We will start by taking a look at the long history of this event and then take a look at TGS 2018, which just wrapped up. TGS was first held in 1996 and is currently held right outside Tokyo in Chiba at Makuhari Mese, right next to Tokyo Disney Resort. The event continues to grow and this year's event was the biggest yet, with 298,000 attendees over the four days. There are usually two business days and two days open to the public. Having attended on a business day, there are a fraction of the attendees as on the public days, which is the way to go if possible. The focus of the show has traditionally been console gaming, but the scope of exhibitors changes every year. Nintendo historically avoids the show in favor of its own Space World events. But third-party developers do share and demo their wares on Nintendo hardware at TGS. Sony consistently has a very large presence, while the Xbox booth size varies from year to year. Namco, Bandai, Capcom, and Square Enix usually also have decent sized booths. Konami and Hideo Kojima were also a big draw, and despite Konami no longer publishing big games, Kojima was in attendance with his upcoming game in trailer form with upscale merchandise as well. While the layout changes often, some things don't. There are two large show spaces and a corridor space between them. There are merchandise booths selling a variety of goods. There is a large amount of cosplay with changing areas and long lines to photograph the best models. A section for indie games. And a food court with consistently mediocre offerings. Even though the doors open to everyone at 10 a.m., Waiting to get in starts when the first trains arrive in the area. If you get there before that time, you will be turned away. This year was Marco's second time attending and his first time attending with his son. Both times he bought a supporter's pass. That pass comes with a t-shirt and early access, but it is triple the price. Many people have passes to enter early, but the wait for the first game you want to play is either a lot shorter or non-existent. The highlight of the show for Marco and his son was Dragon Quest Builders 2. The family center and food court were in the second hall and were relatively less crowded. This is where he spent a lot of his time trying to win prizes, as well as waiting 90 minutes to play Kingdom Hearts 3. As the demo in the Square Enix booth was closed so as to try to get everyone out by 5pm. As for our advice for newcomers, with 100,000 attendees, mostly young men, packed together in a closed space, it can be an assault on the senses. Be prepared. The large crowds can make moving with others difficult, so sticking close and having a plan in place of getting separated could be a good idea. Also, you may want to think twice about bringing a significant other, as they may get bored before you do, or before the show comes to a close. We also recommend bringing your own lunch and enjoying it in the food court seating area, as there are few good food options available. After leaving the show, the trains and train ticket lines are packed, so be prepared to wait. Or maybe go to a restaurant and eat to wait for the train situation to calm down. We hope you enjoyed our video, and thanks for watching.